There are many applications that will use barcodes to you know, help identify products or items within a system. And you know, when you scan that barcode, that is an event. That is a trigger that's going to happen. A value is going to change. And a transaction group can be monitoring that tag. When that tag changes, we can perform some logic and we can be checking back with the SQL database in particular to know what to do. Maybe we want to write a value back to the PLC after we've scanned the value. We also may want to log that, that record in the database saying that here, we scanned it at this time from this particular machine. So it's a really good case for that. And, and in particular, if you think about an actual um, real life scenario, is airport baggage handling systems. You know, we have lots of bags moving around different conveyor belts, and uh, they have these 360 scanners that are going to scan that bag. When that scan happens, we are going to, Ignition is going to see that event happen. We're going to go into the database and, and check where that bag needs to go. And uh, we'll obviously log the, the record, that the fact that we, we scan that bag. And then knowing where it needs to go, we're going to write a value back to the PLC to maybe divert the bag one way or the other on the conveyor line. And so these transaction groups are running behind the scenes. They're, they're constantly checking for these different conditions. And the interface with databases, where, which is where a lot of the logic, a lot of the, the information is going to come from, it could either be a database that Ignition is generating, or it could be a database on the ERP side. It could be a database from the MES side. It doesn't really matter. We're going to be working with the databases to, to know what to do in the situation. And in particular, the barcode scanning, there is a module for Ignition called the TCP uh, IP driver. And it allows us to capture packets that are ASCII packets that are sent over the network and as an event, as a value change, and then do something with that. So we, in particular, we'd use that driver with the SQL Bridge module and the transaction group to be able to divert these bags as they're being scanned in the system. And of course, we have to do these things really high speed. Uh, we, the, the, the SQL Bridge module can run things down to uh, you know, 10 milliseconds if you want to. It's going to be really, really fast on how we can see these events and how we can load these values down. We may have to uh, sequence something on assembly line or on multiple machines where we're going to be doing, we're going to be scanning that thing many, many times. And every time we scan it, we're going to be doing something different. And so we might be keeping track in the database of where that product is, what's happening to it as it moves along that assembly line. So in particular, if you think about a, 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 um, an auto assembly line, there are different cars coming down with different options. Some can be cars, some can be SUVs, some can be for Europe, some can be for US, and there's differences in that. And the robots, that maybe the spot welders have to be doing, have to know where to do the welds, and it's going to be different for each of the machines. And the MES system typically is going to have all of the, the cars that are going to be moving down the assembly line. And we, Ignition, with, with the SQL Bridge module, can interface the database so when a car comes into a station, maybe there's an RFID tag, we scan what that tag is, we have a value change there, we know what's in there because we can check the MES database to see what that is. We can then, based on that, load a value down to the PLC as maybe what the, what the robot should do, what the PLC should do in particular, and we can log the fact that once it's complete, we can say it's, it's past this particular station, it goes on to the next one. So we can see the sequence of events happening, and we can look at a queue. The database is where all this information is stored, but the transaction group is actually taking that and sending down to PLC automatically what's going to happen at each of these stations based on what's in that station at that time. Assembly lines are perfect. Could be could be cars, could be uh, big combines, could be anything that we're moving down down and doing and performing different actions on. It could also be just different disparate machines that we have that we're doing different kinds of processing on. It, it, it doesn't matter. The SQL Bridge module is really going to be in charge of on these events of loading down the proper value to a database, especially looking into a database to see what it needs to do. Okay, so using SQL databases and PLCs together is is gives you a lot of power because the PLC doesn't have all the knowledge as to what to do. There's there's environment variables, there's information in other systems we've got to use to, together in order to get the full system. We could also use these transaction groups for a, a scheduler um, of being able to send values down the PLC on a schedule rather than being event based, you know, which we talked a lot about when values change in the PLC, when the, these events happen, either in the database or the PLC. Well, that's great. That, allow, that allows us to do a lot of things. But what if we just have uh, something based on time. 
or outside influences. Maybe it's based on a web service or based on something else. Um, so a scheduler is going to be really based on time. When certain times uh, are there, we might want to send certain values down to the PLC. And the example that comes to my mind with this is like a, when, when you look at um, sprinkler systems or, you know, for, for obviously massive sprinkler systems where you have to control them and you need to look at the environment and you need to look at, um, you know, the schedule to know when to turn these things on or off, right? And that can very well change based on information we're getting from our instrument data for the weather very, or, or, or what the forecast is for the next few days. Um, but the idea, if you look at this diagram here, is at the edge where we have our, our PLCs that are next to the sprinkling sy sprinkler systems, they're going to be pretty pretty dumb. They don't really know when we should turn these things on or off. Of course, the system above that is going to know. So ignition is going to know. We're going to communicate to those PLCs, whether directly or whether you're going through MQTT like we're showing here. It's really a, a beautiful way to get those, those uh, remote edge data into ignition. But... Um, so ignition would communicate to all these different sprinkler systems and the transaction group can be looking at the schedule that we put into a database and with all the set points that we're going to, so it's like a red big recipe, but based on time and when these events happen, we're going to load that down. But we can also look at the, the instrument data and the web services to see the forecast and maybe know if we need to change that, you know, or not write these things down. If it's raining, we probably don't want to do that. So we can use these other environment variables to determine when we're going to turn these things on or off in the PLC. Uh, so it's a, another case where we can use Ignition as that, as really the control system, I mean, in a sense, uh, where it's, it's looking at these different variables and, and going to load that down to the PLC at the right times.